Welcome back for another episode of LiDAR for Metal Detectorists. So if you remember the last one we went through overlaying aerial shots and uh, also overlaying old maps and you can see I've got an old map overlaid on some LiDAR here. So I guess the next thing is, the obvious thing, is if you're a metal detectorist you're looking for potential targets out on the field um, and you want to try and help steer your metal detecting towards different points, how do you identify those on a map? So, for instance, we can see lots of field workings under here um, that we might want to go and investigate, or let's say we wanted to investigate these individual uh, recesses here. How do we identify those? How do we put a marker on the map? And with QGIS, it's slightly different to a lot of other systems. It's a little bit cumbersome, but it works. So how you need to think about it is you need to think about it in terms of line features, dots, and polygons and how you want to record each. So when I'm recording targets um, that I want to go investigate, I will normally record those as a polygon. But if I was marking up line uh, field lines, I might just do that as a line feature. So in order to do that, let's add a couple of layers here. The first one I'm going to add, and you need to go up to a new shape file layer up here. Click that one. And the first one I'm going to add is fields. And for the fields, I'm just going to mark the old field boundaries. You need to name it. Um, this one, the new field name needs to be quite short. So keep that short as you can. And you need to select the geometry type. So for this one, I'm just going to do a line string. And once you've got that selected, leave everything else as it is. And just press OK. It's going to say it because I've already created it and deleted it. So I'm going to overlay it. That's fine. You won't get that up if it's the first time you're doing it. And you can see fields has popped up down here. But how do I add anything? How do I do anything with it? And this is part of the reason it's a little bit cumbersome. In order to add details, you need to right click that layer and toggle the editing to start off. And you'll get a little pencil that basically says we're editing. And as soon as you do that, some options open up up here um, and you can see add line feature and that's the one we need. So we're going to select add line feature and what you can do is trace the fields or trace whatever line features you'd like to trace. Now I'm going to do it very quickly. And in order to say I want to finish that line feature there, you just right click. You'll get a little pop up here. Uh, you can ID it if you want. I don't tend to. And just press OK and you see a line's been added. So you do that with the, the rest of it. And uh, like I say, I'm just going to go through really quickly and mark up a feature for you. And it could be roads that you're marking, could be hedges, could be old routeways, however you want. And I would suggest having a different layer for each um, that you want to mark up in that way. And then in terms of how you want it to look, the, there's plenty of options over on the right hand side here. You can see in the styling panel, uh, you can make it a simple red, green, change the color here, choose very specifically. So I'm going to just change it to a simple yellow line for now so that it shows out against the gray. And that's how we would add a line um, field feature, if you like. In order to save that, it's really important that you right click and save layer edit. And you don't have to toggle the edit. You can leave the edit switched on as long as you've saved those edits. You can also stop those edits by going current edits. No, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, toggle editing is what I meant to press toggle editing you'll see it disappears and then that that layer is finished until you start editing it again but as i said before if i've got something i want to identify something i want to look into further how would i add that to the map so i'd add a second layer here and i'm going to call that um let's call it target because that's what we're talking about so i'm going to call this layer target and for this one, because the, the shape and size can change, I'm going to add it as a polygon. Again, it's going to say that it exists because I've added it and deleted it, etc. So you'll get up something like this. And remember, in order to edit that layer, you need to right click and toggle the editing. So once you've got the little pencil up in there, there'll be a little option menu up here and there's a button to add polygons. So let's say i'd identified something i want to look at um let's find something on the map so here 
probably some kind of cumuli, something like that. But say that's a target I want to investigate, I'm just going to draw a very quick box around it. Um, you can obviously zoom in, be much more specific about how you want to look at that. And there it is. Um, I would typically change the opacity to suit and change how that feature looks so, so it stands out a little bit more. And then any other feature, say I wanted to look into this here, you just add whatever features interest you that you may think uh, are going to be interesting for checking out with the metal detector. Um, and this is really handy because you can see at a glance, layering over an old map, you can see what already existed uh, in the 1800s, for example. You can see what predates that um, and it takes time to get used to it. But I can see on this map, and this is a bit of an exception, that we have some really old field boundaries. Part of that is down to size, part of that is how they're put together. Um, so I would identify these as a much older field, so that's something I'd want to go and look at if I was looking at another bit of LiDAR data. Um, it might be a round feature, it could be an old foundation for a building, and you can mark anything you like. Be as specific as you like, because obviously we can zoom in if you want to, but let's say that's like an old foundation for a house, we've marked that on the map. But how does that work out? How does that apply to you in the real world? Well, there's plenty of apps you can get for Android or Apple that are able to read GPX files, um, or you can convert them to a KML file, so it can be read in the likes of Google Maps or Google Earth, for example. I tend to use JPX files, which is the open format, um, and I use a bit of software called Maverick, which can read GPX files, so I just export them to my phone. And say I want to take the targets layer with me, uh, so I'm out in the field and I can work out exactly where I am in relation to the things I've identified on the map. In order to take that layer with me, I just right click, export, oops, and then save features as. And you see, it's already in a GPX format. I just label it up and I'll export that out to my phone. There's plenty of other options you can choose from, and there are online converters if you need if you want to convert it to a KML file, for example, for you. Oh no, don't need to. It is there. KML file is there, so you can export it to go straight into Google Maps and uh, Google Earth, etc. If that's your preferred choice of uh, app, and that's pretty much it. Really simple. Um, you can build up a good picture of the kind of things you want to investigate. What's important to you and uh, and then export that for use um, on out in the field thanks for watching along and keep an eye out for the next video where we'll be covering more in metal detecting no nope, we won't be doing that we'll be covering more off in lidar for metal detectorists thanks for watching check out the other videos and subscribe cheers